This month marks the 10 year anniversary of the Imperial Knight Codex, an army and miniatures that truly changed the entire landscape of Warhammer 40k. To me, the knights have always been intriguing and badass, but they've always felt very stale. On top of that, they don't nearly fit my custom Knight Templar Black Templars enough. So today we're gonna learn all about the history of the knights and fully customize one of the awesomest minis of the entire 41st millennia. Let's go! Hello. In the glorious years of the Great Crusade, the lost night worlds were reunited with the emerging Imperium after centuries of isolation. These knights are piloted by a noble and crafted by using long forgotten technology. These machines are truly the biggest, meanest weapon of war. The first epic night saw the light of day in the June 1990 White Dwarf. That's about a year after the first release of the epic Space Marine. And about 10 years before I even was planned. Were you planned, Lucas? <laughs> Heavily inspired by that time's hugely popular Battletech robots. Imperial Paladin, Lancer and Warden were the first three to be announced. And they all had very interesting designs. Oh my god bro. Oh, hell no man, what the Originally there were nine Imperial Knights created in metal for the game. But what's now important is that the Knights were finally part of the 40k universe. The second generation of Imperial Knights however is way closer to the Warhammer we see today, especially in terms of the atmosphere. Around this area in the mid 90s, Armorcast also made their own 32mm Imperial Knight, but made in resin. However, after this, it took until 2014 before Games Workshop finally introduced the plastic kits of the Imperial Knights and became an official part of the main 40k game. Which brings us to today. As you might know by now, I've started my very own Knight Templar themed Black Templar army. I have spent tons of time working on this project and so far I painted this cool banner boy, this even cooler power pose guy. I've started working on my Lionel Hellbrick conversion paint job. Which brings us to a total of two and a half minis. Wait, what? Yes, 150 hours of work and this is all I got. Good job. So for me to ever finish this project, I need something truly knightly and point costly. And what would scream more knight than a freaking 400 points Imperial Knight? But in all reality, there's really nothing that's connecting the Imperial Knight to the actual knights. I mean, what the fuck is even this? Psh, like, the arm and sword is like one. If there's one thing I know about knights, is that they have the sword, so they can, you know, kill the infidels. Where in God's name is the holy tabard? Because if you're a warrior of the Knight Templars, you need to have the tabard. So, where does one even start with a project like this? First of all, I want to repost the miniature into a more stoic pose. Think Captain Morgan. Also, don't tell Emil, but I'm thinking of just ripping off his giant gargant design because it's like holding a banner and raising the one foot. And I think it's a pretty good idea. You know that I'm sitting next to the camera, right? Cut. And in the other hand, of course, wielding a big ass knightly sword. You guys aren't gonna miss out. I will, of course, bring in a metric shit ton of candles and put them on top of the back piece. Let's grab all of the stuff we need and turn this bad boy into the coolest night you've ever seen. Let's go. The biggest and uttermost disturbing problem with this entire build is that I need to find some sort of right hand. Because Games Workshop only include the left one. And after some 10 years research, I found that the only liable way was probably gonna be the 3D print one. I know you guys are like, but Lucas, 3D printing is expensive. But Emil has the 3D printers and he's not given me cookies in forever. So I'm just gonna steal the 3D printer, steal the resin, 
And then what's he gonna do? Cause I mean that's surely a better option than having to buy an entire traitor knight. It costs like 150 US dollars. It looks like the 3D print have survived. I always hate 3D printing because sometimes they fail and sometimes they don't and you never know when. The parts look so freaking good. Once all of the bits were in the 3D printer, I got started at building the main body. Putting all of the bits together without the glue just to get a better understanding of the model as a whole. Then the reposing started. While I fix the pose and sculpt the base, let me talk about this week's sponsor, NordVPN. As someone making their living being online, I am constantly scared of bad actors, especially when using a public Wi-Fi while out traveling or visiting a cafe. With NordVPN, not only is my internet traffic and data safe, my IP address gets hidden from anyone who wants to access my data, which means that all of my data stays just as private as I want it to be. NordVPN is the market-leading VPN with over 5,000 first-class servers across the world. A great example of that is last year when Lucas and I were traveling to Australia. We could, with a simple click, access Swedish TV from across the world, changing our location virtually and still staying safe. Thankfully, this does not only work on your computer, you can also use it on your phone or your TV to keep all of your devices safe. And if you follow our link down below, nordvpn.com slash squidmar, you'll get a massive discount and a bunch of extra months for free when you sign up for their two-year plan. The best thing is, if you just want to try this out and then feel that you don't like it, you have a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. So stay safe out there and visit nordvpn.com slash squidmar. Now that the main pose is done, I can start with the first bits of sculpting. Beginning by adding the rough coil works that attach the leg to the groin, then start adding some clay and tracing the feet for a later step. Then, as soon as the groin joints are hardened, but the groin joints hardened, penis joke. That's a very good joke, Lucas. I'm laughing all the way here. P I can move on to the tabard. And yes, I've seen you guys' comments about this not being a tabard, but actually just a chef's apron. But you know what? I don't care. Look at me, I'm gonna call it the tabard again. Let's get on sculpting the tabard. Rolling out a piece of green stuff and then cutting it into shape. And this is pretty much the only time when green stuff is good for anything because otherwise green stuff just sucks. Then by using a round silicone tool, I make sure to push around the tabard. Once it's secure in all of the nooks and crannies, make sure to create some folds in the fabric by gently pushing it and pinching it around with your fingers. To finish off all of the building steps, I made sure that the 3D printed sword and the flagpole fit nice and snug in the hands. Then added a shit ton of candles on the back piece. And then sculpted the epic base. Bada bing, bada boom, shmada boom. You have a finished mini. But paint, Lucas, you need to paint it. Really?
My initial idea for this video was to build and paint an entire Imperial Knight in less than 24 hours. Because quite frankly, Imperial Knight is quite a lot smaller than a Warlord Titan. So obviously you can do it in 24 hours, right? Unfortunately, as you start working, and especially if you start doing non-metallic metal pieces, time sort of slips through your fingers like wet spaghetti on a midsummer's eve. What? Bro, what are you talking about? So even though I managed to build the mini in something like 12 hours, the paint job alone ended up taking me about 24 hours. Meaning that I added about 50% to the entire time span. But I'm honestly super happy about this paint job and if you want to copy it, make sure to watch this video where we go a bit more in depth on how to make my Black Templar art. Which means it's now time for me to tell you about our amazing website where you can find all of the tools and gear we use in all of our videos listed. Which means it's now time for a grand... Lucas, what about the banner? You did a banner for it. I did draw the banner in the picture, right? I used a bunch of different plastic card, heated them up in various ways, more or less successful, pinched them all together with my fingers, and some super glue that also pinched my fingers together to make this banner look awesome. And now, it's finally, again, time for a grand reveal! Oh my god! It's starting to shape up so well. Obviously I didn't manage to finish the epic freehand on the banner, I think it's probably gonna be its own 40 hour project. A massive thanks to all of our amazing Patreons, you guys are truly the best, and also a massive thanks to this week's sponsor, NordVPN. With that said, have a cheerful evening, bye bye!